Nigeria, with an estimated population of about 190 million people, only about 54% of its population has access to electricity, most of which is directed to the urban centers, thereby leaving the rural areas with very limited electricity connection. This has created immense socio-economic challenges for rural dwellers with dire consequences on national productivity and economic growth. Already, Nigeria's electricity sector is suffering a major setback as the nation can only transmit about 4,500 megawatts to its massive population, even though there is a generation capacity of about 12,500 megawatts. An attempt to increase the transmission load will collapse the age-old and fragile national grid. It is estimated that urban residents depend on alternative and expensive backup generators for 60% of their power needs, sometimes spending as much as 50 naira per kilowatt for power generation. As grim as this may seem in the urban areas, the situation is a lot worse with rural dwellers. For starters, only about 35% of rural Nigeria are connected to the national grid, leaving about 80 million Nigerians without power supply. Due to these challenges and also recognizing the potential of the rural areas in the development of Nigeria, the federal government in 2001 set an ambitious target for rural electrification for the next two decades. The government had pledged electricity access to 75% of the entire population by 2020, while striving to achieve 100% access by 2040. It was against this backdrop that the government established the Rural Electrification Agency REA, an agency that would have the sole responsibility of expanding electricity access to the rural areas. Unfortunately, this has not yielded much result, as a 2018 study would later show that only about 25% of rural households have access to electricity. There are several reasons why Nigeria has been unable to reach its rural electrification targets. From inadequate regulatory frameworks to lack of expertise to market uncertainty, however, the lack of funding has been a major factor that has impeded the acceleration of rural electrification in Nigeria. In order to cover the cost of rural electrification, it is estimated that the Nigerian government will need to spend as much as 50 billion naira every year. Unfortunately, recent reports show that Nigeria's Rural Electrification Fund received a total of about 6 billion naira only between 2017 and 2020. In fact, in 2020, the fund received just about 2.8 billion naira a far cry from the required 50 billion naira needed to achieve the nation's rural electrification target. When the REA was established in 2006, the government earmarked three main sources of funding for the agency and they included Development Financial Institutions or DFIs like the World Bank and the African Development Bank, monies appropriated from the National Assembly and finally from the Nigeria Electric Regulatory Commission or NERC. A breakdown of these sources reveals that between 2017 and 2020, only about 2.4 billion naira has been received from DFIs, about 3.3 billion naira has been released by the National Assembly, and NERC has only contributed about 335 million naira to the Rural Electrification Fund. Of these three primary funding sources, funding from the National Assembly has been quite consistent over the years, unlike the others. NERC, for example, has not been able to remit to the fund since 2017 when it made its last contribution. Rural electrification in Nigeria is facing a massive funding gap. Only about 6% of the required annual funding is currently met with a huge funding gap of over 40 billion naira annually, thereby throwing a heavy wrench into the government's efforts to achieve its electrification target for 2040. Although there are funding mechanisms that could be explored to scale up rural electrification, however, several risk factors stand in the way and act as a barrier to these funding opportunities, thereby making it extremely difficult for private operators to access funds for electrification projects. Some of these risk factors include uncertain regulatory frameworks, such as the grid extension factor. You see, the law makes it unclear as to what happens to an off-grid project in a particular area when the national grid finds gets to that spot and this has scared away lots of potential investors and developers other risk factors are government bureaucracy which has made tender processes complicated tax and duties regulations which have also been key barriers in renewable energy development as this has had a tremendous impact on development cost project level funding such as equity or debt financing and asset-based lending 
end use level funding through microcredit or leasing arrangements and microfinance funding schemes are some of the innovative funding models that could be explored to expand rural electrification in Nigeria. Countries like India are already implementing some of these models and have thereby scaled up rural electrification in their country. India has one of the most complex systems of subsidies and financing models for rural renewable energy investments compared to other Asian countries. According to an integrated energy policy report, India is projected to have 5 to 6 percent of its energy mix from renewables by 2032. Meanwhile, in Africa, some countries like Ghana and Rwanda are pushing rural renewable electrification by designing strong policies and regulatory frameworks. Today, Ghana records 79% rural electrification access due to its national electrification scheme, while Rwanda, which had only about 6% of its population connected to electricity in 2000, now records over 50% energy access. The International Energy Agency reported that an additional 30% of Rwanda's population is being electrified every single year, placing them on a trajectory to achieve their target of 100% electrification by 2024. Experts in the rural electrification sector have rightly argued that a synergistic approach involving relevant stakeholders from both government and the private sector would be required to adequately address the gap experienced in rural electrification expansion. A combination of adequate regulatory frameworks and the right financial instrument could be explored in order to lower investment rates, reduce cost, and increase industry capacity. This will go a long way in getting rid of funding barriers faced in the sector, the much-needed investments to scale up rural electrification in Nigeria.